Good morning and welcome to Holy Communion and Service here at the Bratislava International Church. We hope that you have found a bulletin, either a paper one or a digital one, which was sent out last night, also available on our website, BratislavaInternationalChurch.org, whatever you are comfortable doing. You can follow along. We are also recording this service for those who are with us today, so they will enjoy the service later this afternoon. Hopefully you saw the guidelines and ordinances for our gathering today. Thank you for following the direction of our ushers in this time together as we figure out how to worship in light of all of these guidelines for this time of pandemic. Remember to keep uh, your masks on throughout worship uh, until later on in communion, in which you'll have a moment to consume the elements. Um, for sharing the peace, we'll do so with words. Um, so do so as you are comfortable behind uh, your mask. And sing also as you are comfortable behind your mask, or just listen to the music. Today for communion, our ushers will guide you forward separately, so just follow the direction of the ushers for that time. Um, and uh, we want you to know that if you are comfortable as well today, um, we're going to have coffee uh, at next to Patchy like we normally do, but we'll, instead of going out on the street, we will enter um, through the door over here that the sacristans will open for us. We'll take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Please join us in singing the gathering hymn found at the end of your bulletin, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. <laughs>
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our reading. The first reading today comes from Acts, the seventh chapter. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged Stephen out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their toss at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Word of God, word of life. Thank you. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take it out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hands. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Our second reading today comes from 1 Peter, chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to the Lord, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to the offer, or to offer spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, it is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. Once you were not a people, but now you are about your God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. 
Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen my Father. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the work themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Maker, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Where our God is, there we may be also. It's hard to believe, and perhaps something like an out-of-body experience, that we are physically present in worship today. After two months of online worship, which continues for some, I might have, we have gathered together in person again. It is a special thing to be together in worship, dear friends. And whether you are here today or not, I think the past many months of quarantine will allow you to agree. But what our scripture passages have to teach us today is that no matter where you are, there your God will be. It goes both ways, after all. Not just where our God is, there we will be also. This is the nature of our life-giving relationship with our God. If we believe God is everywhere, present in both suffering and celebration, then God is with us, Emmanuel, whether we worship in a church or not. In fact, there has been a popular saying that has emerged in ministry in the last 20 years or so, and it seems to redefine what the church looks like. That saying, the church is not a building. Maybe you've heard it before. You'll know if you have that I'm not talking about worship itself, but rather the idea that the church is defined not by its building, where people gather for worship. If that were true, many congregations would no longer exist as they are not in their building. The church is the people that fill the building. The church is the body of believers who gather throughout time and space. The Bright Slava International Church, all of you gathered here today and those watching online later today, and even those who have moved on from this place but have never forgotten it are still this church. All of these people are 
the church. Today's second reading from 1 Peter may be misleading in this regard, with all the language about stones and Christ as the chief cornerstone. Because many churches around us, especially in this part of the world, ones we know and love, are built from stone. But in reality, this passage and ones like it serve as a metaphor for a church that is built on the belief of its people. Its stones that provide the support for it to endure in the ages are its people. As much as our faith is edified by gathering in this or any building for worship, it isn't the foundation for or means by which we live out Christian community as the body of Christ. Buildings have not nor will they ever last throughout all of history. But the church, Christ's church, Christ's followers have and will because of the belief they have passed down through the generations, through its people. Through this pandemic or any calamity, we are comforted by Jesus' pastoral words to not let our hearts be troubled. I have to believe, though, that Stephen, in our first reading from Acts, must have been just a little bit troubled when he knew he would be stoned to death for his faith. The very image that's lifted up <laughs> as the foundation of the church in our second reading is the, the very thing that causes Stephen's death and the first martyrdom. Although it doesn't seem he was too troubled, or at least doubting, his adherence to his faith, even in his, his final moments, bears true Christian witness. Through his plea to God for mercy for those who harmed him, he amazes both his murderers and his fellow believers. His noble character and faith is as strong as the very stones that killed him. Not as strong, really, but stronger. Stephen's witness reaffirms that the church, God's church, Christ's church, is for all people. And it depends on the people to carry it on. However, Scripture can sometimes be twisted to mislead the very people who try to live it out. The sixth verse of our Gospel passage from John, it often gets lifted out as evidence that Christianity is somehow exclusive. But this is simply not true. Jesus is responding to Thomas's question, a person who feels lost in navigating his faith in the midst of the trauma of it all. <clears throat> all being Jesus, their rabbi, their messiah, and his sudden death and his even more sudden resurrection. Jesus' answer about being the way, the truth, and the life isn't a direction to a location or a fast track to salvation, it is about lifting up a relationship with God that is for all. In all times and places, whether in a church building or not. And upon whose backs, whose witness of faith lays the foundation for the church for generations to come. There's one more item to address from John's Gospel and our understanding about the church and the relationship with God we are called to therein. Jesus speaks about his Father's house, that there are many dwelling places or rooms or even in older translations, mansions. At any rate, the most helpful translation of the original Greek word meno here is abiding places. The disciples had heard the invitation to abide before, so they would have had some memory of this, some special and intimate connection with this idea, with this word. To know that it is about a deeply abiding relationship that nothing can sever. And so what Jesus is trying to say, in spite of the separation that we sometimes feel, whether because of pandemics and social distancing and the woes that it brings, 
or anything else. None of it can affect the deeply abiding relationship we have with our God through Jesus. Where we deeply dwell in a relationship that leads to life, true life, in this life and the next. So as you look forward with hope to a more free pandemic uh, measures, lifted pandemic measures, and seeing familiar faces again, remember that we are the church. And as the church, we have a unique opportunity to deeply abide with our God and Jesus. There are so many people that will realize this desire even more after a time like this. The field is ripe for harvest, my friends. So let us do all do our part to share about this church. Not the Maui Coastal in particular, but this body of people that is the church. A fellowship of Christian believers that seeks to deeply abide with our God. Whose relationship truly shows us the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you. Continually strengthen 
your church and it, as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy. Humble us, Creator God, as a part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made. From volcanoes to ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy. In your honor. Prayer. Align our ways to your love, O oh God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. We're mindful especially of Eliza McIntosh. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children. For the safe pregnancies of expectant parents and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Generous God, we call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to turn and face those around you, all around you, but stay where you are and share that peace with your words. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. You may be seated. We'll take uh, our time now to collect your offerings. We thank you for your continued generosity um, in this time of the pandemic, especially through online giving that has been our only way in the last two months to receive your offerings. Uh, the offerings of this congregation have, of course, dropped considerably in the last two months. Um, we ask that you carefully consider this in your giving today and moving forward, but just keep in mind that we are so grateful whatever you can give uh, to support the ministry of this congregation. Thank you so much uh, for all that you can do to support us. We'll now receive your offerings. <laughs>
please stand as you are able. And let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration. But you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the Lord's Prayer in the language of our preference. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Taste and see the goodness of our God. Please be seated, and the ushers will bring you forward individually or as family units, and uh, you are invited to Receive the host from me, and then step to the side, and with your other hand, uh, with one hand, take the host, and with your other hand, take the cup, and then you can step to the side to remove your mask and consume the elements and dispose of your cup in the basket. Come for all this room.
life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A few announcements to share with you after worship today. As I mentioned, we'll have a ton of the fellowship in the courtyard next to Patchy. We have a sanitizer and coffee there. We ask you to help yourself and to, you know, do your part to keep your masks on as much as you can while sipping your coffee and maintain social distancing, but we want to have some time for fellowship as you are comfortable. Uh, and next Sunday, we'll gather in the same way for worship for more communion at 10, so please uh, come and tell your friends. We have room um, in here, so we didn't fill it up today, so just know that there is room for others. Uh, regular ministries uh, will maybe continue in a hybrid of online and in person. It depends on the thing and the space that's available. Um, we have Bible study on Tuesday evenings. It's a little bit of a condensed space, so I'm not sure if it's safe for us to, to do it in person. So we'll likely continue online. If you're interested, please let me know. Uh, women's group meets online, and, and so is the young adult group as well. If you're interested in any of those, please let me know. And we need volunteers of worship like Megan, who read today, so if you would like to do that to lead prayers um, to help with ushering or anything, please let us know. And be sure to tell your friends and family about our online worship availability on our YouTube channel. Today, the ushers will uh, sort of help dismiss you, um, but much like they brought you up for communion and family units, so please follow their direction for that. And if you would like to come to coffee hour, as I mentioned, They'll come out and go all in the corridor through this doorway over here uh, to go through to the courtyard next door. Um, otherwise, you can leave the same way you came in through the alley. I invite you to stand for the benediction. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing our sending song, I know that my Redeemer lives, and the verses are marked in your bulletin.
good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.